Christopher, let me uh, ask you a little question here. Do you believe in the possibility of time travel? Do you think it's possible to travel through time? Because we're going to do something now that if it goes well, if it goes the way it sometimes goes, if we get lucky, it looks like time travel. Okay, and I used to believe in time travel. I used to. But, and maybe in the future. Anyway, no, no. go ahead, grab one. Grab one, show it to the camera. Okay. After you've shown it to the camera, I want you to hold it above the table between your thumb and first finger, just like that. Okay. I want you to take a mental picture of me fanning out the cards like this, spreading them out, and you holding your card. Take a me mental picture right now. Because that's the moment we're going to try to come back in time to. Okay? There's your card. I'm going to be really fair. Slip it about in approximately the middle of the pack, approximately. Okay? Now look, I'm going to give the cards just a couple of cuts here. And I'm going to give them something called the upside down all round poker shuffle. I don't know if you've ever been to Vegas, but they do this in Vegas. What they do is they push a couple of cards over, to, to turn them towards the floor. Then some flipped up towards the ceiling, towards the floor, towards the ceiling, towards the clouds, towards heaven, towards hell, up, down, all round poker shuffle. We'll even put a couple on top. Now, I do illusions. That's what I do for a living. But I'm going to do this part very slowly because I want you to say, when I say they're mixed up, up and down, you can see some cards are face up, some cards are face down. Some cards are going this way, some cards are going that way. I bet I can even find, for you and I, cards going, uh, yeah, face to face. Now let me ask you right now, is the Queen of Spades, was that your card? No. It wasn't. Hold out your thumb and finger just like before. Okay. I'm going to do this very slowly. Hold on to the corner of the Queen just like that. Now watch. We just went back in time. Back to when every single card, all of them, all of them, all of them, every single card in the pack was all face down. Back to when I'm hoping you were holding your card. It's a shuffled pack. It's completely impromptu. You start off by asking someone if they believe in time travel. Uh, it's always kind of interesting. Sometimes the conversation lasts two seconds. Other times nerds get deep into it and refer to Deep Space Nine and the time the socks went awry. Um, you have someone grab a card, someone grabs a card from the middle of the pack, you have them hold it out between thumb and finger, and I always sort of model it, I say I want you to hold it out, uh, sorry, they take a look at the card, in this case we're going to be using six of hearts, uh, and I always hold out a card and I say I want you to hold it between thumb and finger just like this, because I'm trying to create an image that when we come back to there is this eerie deja vu quality about it. So they hold it out between thumb and finger, like that. And then I spread out the cards and I say, I want you to take a mental picture. And I make the sound effect of an old uh, automatic camera. A couple of these crazy sounds. Then I take the card back. Now, any way you can control the card to the top of the deck is going to work fine for you. Okay? You want it on top of the deck at the end. Um, the uh, one way I'll often do it is the turnover pass. I'll do a few different things, but in this instance, I want to share with you guys this cool control. And what it is is you take the selected card, you put it in the front, leave it sticking out about oh a third or so. And now you don't want to be holding the deck firmly. You actually want to be holding the deck sort of between the fingers and thumbs on the side, kind of loose. And what you'll find, as long as the grip is loose enough, when I firmly tap the front of the card, okay, it'll actually stick out a little bit on the back. Now normally it'll stick out even further. Let me give it a better tap here. Give it a little tap here like this, boom like that. There we go. So there it is. The card is actually what's called back jogged. So I didn't actually have to do any sleight of hand at all and the card is sticking out the back a little bit. Now so you guys can really see it, I'm going to pronounce it even more and you'll feel fine with practice when you tap it. But let's say you've tapped it, you've got to angle the deck a little like this. Let's say it's sticking out that far. So if I want to get that to the top of the deck, all I have to do now is push down with my thumb on the back end of the card, push down and it'll immediately, and then kind of push the ball of my thumb in, it immediately creates an instant break above the card. So I just have to do a double cut, which is to riffle off the bot, some of the half of the bottom cards, then cut again like this and that'll bring my selection to the top of the deck. So any way you can get this selection to the top of the deck is fine. I, and well, let's say the selection at this point guys is the seven of spades. We're going to go, that's the selected card, okay? Now, I turn the deck face up and I say, you ever been to Vegas? I'm going to show you the upside down, all round poker shuffle. And as I'm saying that, I'm holding the deck and with the, my thumb at the back, I'm going to riffle off one, two cards. So basically, I'm going to riffle off two cards and get a break above the bottom two cards. So I've got the selection and then an indifferent card, okay? 
Now, I'm going to hold that break with my pinky as I spread through and I'm going to grab four, five, six cards, turn them over, put them on top. Then, I'm going to push off another five or six cards face up underneath and grab everything, and I'm doing it with my thumb from the bottom, grab everything and turn that over. And I'm going to keep doing that, grabbing a few cards, grabbing a few cards, and it's a beautiful way I mean, you just get this, it's why it's called the slop shuffle. People are absolutely convinced that you're making a total mess of things, okay? But what in fact you're doing is all these cards are face down on top and all these cards are face up on the bottom. You have what's called faced the deck. Half the cards are face down, half the cards are face up. And I do that until I get to the last two cards and I handle the last two cards as one. It's the selection and, the, and I toss this on top here and square everything up, okay? Now, I then say, now, it's one thing for me to say the cards are mixed up, but I want you to see. So, I reach and I cut into the bottom half. As long as I lift up all the cards and I'm into the bottom half, I'll get a face-up card. As long as I lift up cards and I'm into the top half, so only I want 10, 15, 20 cards, I'll get a face-down card. So, I can very casually, so a face-up card, face-down cards, face-up card, face-down card. I can do this all day as long as I'm cutting and again, no real sleight of hand. I'm just cutting into the appropriate one of the two halves. Now, what you're going to find is there's always going to be two cards that divide the two halves, They're, and these are face to face. And there's often a little buckle there. Now, you can try to very subtly find it and cut it smoothly and all that. What I prefer to do to people is use presentation to cover a, what would normally be a slightly a difficult slight. So I say I've got cards face up, face down, cards going this way, cards going that way. I said I bet I could even find, for you and I, I bet I, even, even, I can even find cards going, yeah, there they are, face to face. So I literally look for the spot. As I say, I bet I can even cards find going, and you'll find because it's often buckled a bit, that you'll find that gap very easily. Cards even going face to face. Now, as I turn both halves over, down and up, that larger action is going to cover the smaller action of me turning the face up cards face down. Okay? So I better even cards, find cards going face to face. Yeah, there we go. So now the entire deck is going one way except for your double lift. You are so far ahead of the crowd. Now you do a double lift. And again, a double lift is me handling the two cards as one. You can come over from the back with your thumb. Lift up the two until you got it, and then you can turn them over like this if you want. Uh, you can do a strike double, which is what I use, which is sort of very knacky, takes time. The deck is slightly beveled to one side, and then I come over with my first finger, come up the side until I can feel the top two cards. It's, this definitely take, that can take months or years to learn that touch. But I say, was the king of spades your card? They say no. I apparently turn over the king, hand them their selected card, say hold on the first finger and thumb, and I say watch, watch, and I, then I say wave the card and watch, watch. Now the reason why I say wave the card and watch, watch is because you're going to have a certain number of people who are going to want to be tempted to do this at this point and quickly look at the card just in case because they don't trust magicians. So you want to make sure you really control them by saying hold on to the corner and watch, watch, watch. And if you think that the sort of people that are going to uh, kind of try to blow the trick, then you can say watch, watch, look, they're all going, and you can quickly rush to that moment. That'll pull enough focus that they won't turn their card just yet. Look, they're all going the same way. Or, as I find, if people often don't mess with my show, I, I sort of, as an expert, there's a sense of confidence that comes off me that people are tempted not to mess with me. But if I've got my, if there's a sense that I have the time to do this, then I have them hold the corner, say wave, and I say, look, we're back to that moment. Back to when the cards, and I don't just go boom. I go back to when the cards not just a few cards, but all the cards, all the cards were going the same way. And then I love it. If there's a table there like this, or maybe somebody's uh, got a, um, a big swordfish laid out on a, a trunk, I'll spread those out in that swordfish, the glistening sort of piscine, the, the seawater, everyone can smell that smell. Spread that out there and then end like this. And of course with a line about, we, there you have it, we've just successfully gone back in time.